What's going on investors? It's AK from Fallible here and today we are going to do a market review. I want to know why we stopped going up. Look, we just stopped the rally. We're going a bit sideways now. What does this mean? Are we headed lower again? Are we just going to pause for a bit and head higher? Well, we are going to answer all these questions in this video. And who's the best person to answer all these questions? None other than Alex Barrow of Macro Ops, the best and most smartest analyst we have. He just released a new market brief here called Large Breath Thrust. Oh. Alex. Ooh. But anyway, let's get started. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, then you know that previously we talked about a major supply overhang in this red area right here. And guess what? This area is exactly where we hit and now we're going sideways. And overhead supply is basically an area where a lot of people bought and if the stock market dipped from there, they'll be waiting for prices to hit that area again before they sell. So that's why you get selling pressure right around that area. And Alex also says that this bounce is technically overextended. The price is near its upper Bollinger Band. So that's another reason we could see some significant selling here and he thinks that one more good washout could really set the stage from both a technical and sentiment point of view for another major leg higher and washout means what we talked about before like prices possibly going from here all the way back down to lows now it doesn't necessarily have to go that far but it's a possibility and alex also says here that we don't need to see a sell-off we could see persistent strength and have the market move higher from here but he believes that it's odds on that we see a reversal before the market makes that major move and this again has to do with sentiment and resetting that sentiment which we'll talk about pretty soon here now there have been some good internal indicators we've seen turning with this recent rebound so right here you see credit rebounding and credit leads the equity markets when you have them diverging that's when you know an equity rally might not be real so you want them moving in the same direction which they are and that's good and it's the same thing for cyclicals versus defensive stocks and once again we talked about this before so just go back to the old video but when defensive stocks are doing well obviously investors are more defensive and that's bearish but when cyclical stocks are doing well it's risk on again so here you see this yellow line compares the cyclical versus defensive and if it's going up that means cyclicals are doing better than the defensive stocks and again you want to see this trend in the same direction with the market if they're diverging that's not a good sign here they're moving in the same direction and that's great and then alex goes on to say that the various breadth indicators are showing extremely large buying pressure coming to the market and this is his long-term breadth indicator right here it's basically the advanced decline line and down here you see it's rebounding nicely but for an official signal you want it to cross this 0.6 black line and market breadth is basically a measure of how many stocks are moving higher versus how many are moving lower so to see an actual good bull rally you need to have the entire market moving higher not just a few large stocks leading the pack if it's just a few stocks it's likely not gonna last so getting that breadth is very good and then sentiment trader put out a report that basically confirms what Alex was thinking so starting on January 4th we spent quite a bit of time looking at the thrust and buying pressure it was extreme and widespread and hasn't stopped from several different viewpoints the cluster of updates over the past three weeks has been extraordinary there's always the risk that this time is different due to changes in market structure a concern that will probably never go away but if we take the readings we're seeing at face value then the past three weeks have been truly historic the three week average of the up volume ratio has gone from below 35 percent to above 65 percent in less than a month going back to 1940 this has only happened twice before which is shown in this chart right here here and here and now here and both of the other times triggered after approximately two year declines of just under 30 percent so quite a bit more extended than our current one but what's remarkable is that both also kicked off major bull markets that were essentially straight up for the next six months at least. So as stocks continue to ignore any short-term signs of exhaustion here, these two precedents should at least be considered. So yeah, the last two times that this happened, we had massive bull runs higher. And now it's happening again, but we didn't even get the 30% extended drawdown. So we'll see if it holds true. And this same buying breath hasn't just happened in equities, but it's happened in credit as well. And I've mentioned before that credit traders are always the guys that you should be listening to. They are the smartest in the hierarchy of traders so you can see in this chart right here that bond breath has been excellent so people are buying credit as well which is a good sign for equities so alex sums it up here he says this type of buying pressure needs to be respected it doesn't guarantee that we'll see a major rally from here but it's one of the data points we need to see for a major bottom to form and a subsequent rally to occur and this type of action is even more significant when weighted against the broader context of overall market sentiment and position so alex is basically explaining what i said before that you need buying pressure and breath and you need these internal indicators working for you to see an actual sustained rally so this is all good news that the bull is alive and now if we look at sentiment in the market which our favorite indicator is the bank of america merrill lynch global fund manager survey it shows that fund managers remain extremely long cash they're holding a lot of cash on the sidelines and this is bullish because all that cash eventually needs to go into the market and that's the buying pressure we'll see pushing equities higher and then alex also says here that they seem to be favoring banks which alex thinks is an obvious value trap and then they keep moving greater allocations into emerging markets 
which is another value trap because of the changing macro regime and the slowing of China and being BOP constrained. So when he says all these things are value traps, he's saying that the managers are going to get in there. It's not going to work out for them and they're going to be piling back into equities. So that's almost a good sign that there's a lot more buying pressure that could still come to push equities higher again. And if you want to learn more about what Alex is talking about when it comes to emerging markets, if you're investing over there, he has a great article about it on the website at macro ops. And I'll just link to this in the comments, descriptions, wherever. Definitely go read that. So we have bullish confirming moves from credit and cyclicals. We have historical breadth thrusts in both stocks and bonds. And then we have sentiment and positioning at very bearish levels. So look at this. The level of pessimism is a near all time low that happened in 2012. So there is a ton of pessimism baked into US stocks. And it's a good thing because sentiment is a contrarian indicator. So if a ton of people are bearish, that means they had their money on the sidelines and the market will likely go higher as they capitulate on their bearishness and throw their money back into the market. Market always wants to do the opposite of what everyone thinks, which is why back at the end of December when prices were just crashing and everyone was calling for the bear market and a huge, huge crash, it was just a signal that this probably isn't it because bull markets die on euphoria. They don't die on pessimism. So he says here, one more leg lower should really cement the bearishness and set the market up for a strong run and a great opportunity to add to our longs. Until then, patience. So the other thing that a move lower will do is make people even more bearish. Just think about someone who's just buying into this rally right now, because that happens a lot. A lot of people tend to buy when the rally is over. And then from here, we get another move lower. They're getting chopped up again. They're going to throw up their hands and say, I'm done with this. And when they say that, that's when the market is really going to take off. So all in all, if you look at this S&P chart right here, the market might be moving sideways for a while. It might move lower. Doesn't mean the bear is back and we're going to suffer another crash. It's just a healthy move. Now, the other thing I wanted to do is go over some of the positions that I talked about in the last three stocks for February video, because I picked a bad time to record right before earnings and everything changed. So I figured I'd give a quick update on my positions. So one of the stocks, Xilinx, which I finally figured out how to pronounce, it had earnings the day after I made that video. And earnings were pretty great. Got a nice surprise of nine cents and the market loved it. And you can see this thing is up over 18% today. So like I said, I didn't know what was going to happen going into earnings, but I wasn't too worried because first of all, momentum is on your side. And second of all, I have wide enough stops. And third of all, proper position sizing. So in case something did happen and it really dropped even past the wide stop that I had, I, my portfolio would still be okay. No one stock is going to kill me, but it's always nice when earnings turn out good because you get a huge pop. Adds a good little chunk to my portfolio. And actually with this pop, we shot past our target and we took off 25% of our position. That's exactly what you want to do. Start taking profits off the table. And normally what happens when you get such a big jump in a stock is that it will consolidate for a period of time. Could be a month, could be shorter, but it'll probably go sideways. Or it can even go lower and fill the gap before moving higher again. And in that case, you will be pretty happy that you took some profits off the table. In the best case scenario, with the strongest stocks, they pop and they just keep on going. And if that's the case, you still got 75% of your position on there. So anyway, taking partial profits is usually a good idea. And then the other stock I was talking about, Tesla, I was talking about how we had wide stops and I was happy about it because we weren't getting knocked out. Well, pretty soon after I made that video, the very next day, it dropped below our stop and I got knocked out. And I mean, it's fine the way I was sized in that position and not taking a huge hit. But this is what happens. You win some and then you lose some. And if your strategy is correct and your system is back tested, like the NASDAQ all stars that I use, then you know over the full cycle of all these winners and losers, you're going to come out ahead. And that's what you want. So I don't really stress these ups and downs. And again, Tesla's earnings are still in six days. So who knows what's going to happen? Maybe it's going to pop huge again. And am I going to be sad that I missed out? Of course I'm not because I got my FOMO trading guy that I just reference every time something like that happens. Gives me all the tips and tricks I need to avoid feeling those emotions, especially in a stock like Tesla that's so damn volatile. I mean, you're going to get thrown around, so you've got to be able to control it. If you want that guide, go ahead and click that link in the descriptions or this video or comments and go to the page where you could enter your email so I know where to send it. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for email notifications so you know when the next one comes out. I will keep you updated on everything you need to know about markets. So subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Stay fallible out there. Bye.